Good evening. I wrap scene with your metal market wrap up and this wrap up is for Thursday. And we're now at the 13th of January, 2022, 5.35 PM. I'll tell you, you want to get killed, trade the futures right now. It is wild and out of control as we're getting major shifts just like this back and forth. Yesterday, risk on day, buy everything. This morning, follow through. By about one o'clock, the roll began and everything came unglued. Another market that is total insanity is the natural gas. Up 14% in price on Wednesday, down 12.5% or so today. You talk craziness? That's craziness. These aren't little moves. These are big time moves. And you don't want to get caught in that. You'll tell me how great it is. There's the volatility. Yeah, sure. I've, I own a brokerage company. I am telling you, that's not quite how it works. You need that cut dramatically down, not even half. You need to get it to the point where the market's comfortable. I had a trader today writing me about silver and I, he was talking to me, well, you know, you said the risk is too big, but if I trade minis, it's not that big. One of the things that I've learned over the years, and I, I want to share this with everybody that's listening, is you generally set your risk parameter off the full size contract. I don't care if the mini or a micro contract offers less risk. If the master contract, which is the big one, doesn't say do that trade, I don't think you do the trade. I don't care that you can trade in a macro or a micro or whatever it is, mini contracts. Who cares? If the risk isn't there, if the big boy, you don't do it. Now, that doesn't mean, remember the old days where we had a full-size S&P? The big boy in the S&P, as you know, is the E-mini S&P. So th there's a logic to this that you follow. Okay. When we look at the chart action, you're still very much going flat for the week. We are up 1.31% going into Friday's trade, and we are open tonight. You can see how the market sort of stalled out here. It's pretty much as I described it all week. Now the pattern that we have, if we take a look, you've, this is 1830.7. I wanted to put that on so you could see it. So you have lower highs, lower lows. You have an outside day down today. Do you see that? And if I come back here, you get to see this real nice and clear. If that high is taken out, the odds are you're going to go up to wherever the Bollinger Band is. Got that? When I look at the market right now, you can see what the trend is doing. You have lower highs, lower lows. Therefore, the trend is down. The risk associated to me is if you take out the highs of Wednesday, I'm sorry, Thursday, that could set the market up where? The reason I said Bollinger Band is because I already know the 18, the uh, 200, the 100 day moving average of closes are all below the market. Those are support. The resistance is the upper Bollinger Band at 1834.20. So if you take that out, the odds are very strong that's where you're gonna go. And that, if you don't take out this low, still would give you the patterns that uh, get confusing. Do you really have higher highs, higher lows? It's gonna be a hard one to figure out. In terms of the slow stochastic, it is overbought. So I see a sideways market that has to make a decision sooner rather than later. Does it believe the inflation scenarios here? Does it believe it's lasting? If so, what you do is you come out of the sideways action and make a, a base and away you go to the upside. If gold's going to disappoint everybody, it's got to come out of this to the downside. You're at the point where any time now, this can happen. So some traders will straddle this. There's a straddle and a strangle. Remember that in options. And they'll say, well, if it breaks out here, I want to get up to a certain level. I'll buy calls. I'll buy puts and let it do it. Others, if they're going to strangle it, they're saying, well, I'm going to write a call, write a put. It's just going to stay like that. Everybody's got their own way of doing those trades. In the gold-silver ratio, silver's now gaining on gold. Why do I say that? See, remember the number was up here. Well, as this number keeps getting underneath the 18-day average and getting smaller, it means you need less silver to own one ounce of gold. That's the ratio. When you look at silver, 
the rally carried up high enough to get over this 2330. This was the example that I started you off with. I had one of my customers, I said it's in a downtrend, but I doubted that it's worth selling into this because prior to uh, this, you had lower highs and a lower low. And I said, the risk there is over 2330. And he was telling me, yes, but I can come in with a mini contract and instead of $2,500 risk or whatever, I can risk 250. He's wrong. You base it off the full size contract. And I said it was too much of a risk. The market comes up, knocks him right out, goes up to the resistance point. Now it's backing off. Just because you can use a micro or mini contract doesn't mean you do that. That's my point, all right? Some traders like to, don't second guess me. If I said it's too much risk, it is. You can still take whatever I say and do what you want. All right, I don't see a trend. I see a market that's now doing this, waffling back and forth, trying to figure out the next pattern. Copper's impressive. It had that monster rally two days ago. You went up 3.3%. You've given up very little of it. I didn't think you'd stay over the upper Bollinger Band. The odds of doing that in copper, you don't do it very often. So look at what markets typically do and you get a pretty good idea. Even on the downside, you don't do it. You'll get those points and you have to when you narrow in and you break them one way or the other. But when you get the breakout, you can get these moves when you get it. You didn't quite get that follow through this time. So that was important to me. And it means you might back off a bit more. We need a pattern here to trade. You have a lower and low, higher high. That's to me not a trading pattern. In the platinum, we have a pattern of lower highs, lower lows, trend down, but the bias up. So the part that is the filter of it is when you stay over the 18 day average is saying what? No, 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 you don't wanna be short when you're over that number. Close under it and you might wanna go with the bearishness to right here. If you rally from here and get through the highs of two days ago, right here, which was Wednesday. Remember, we're in Friday already trade. 983 would be that number. Then the question is, can you carry it further into the 100 and the 200 day average? But that, if you don't take out 961.30, would turn the trend up. You'd then have higher lows, higher highs. I'm giving you all the scenarios. I, I don't know what to do with this, uh, with this right here. So I don't have a recommendation in it. The battleground on the Palladium is just right where you're at. You're stuck at the 18 day average. If you get a move now back under this low right here, and that was 1861 and the day before its high was 1964 and a half. So if you break down, the high here was 1945, you didn't take that out. So let me bring you up to where we're at. This is Thursday. If you take this out of the 1861, you could be headed back right in here to 1773. Stay where you're at and you're just churning and trying to figure it out. So I, here's what I do. If you could see my hands, they're, and I got my jeans on. Put them in my pocket and that's where I keep them because even when you think you know, you have to have a tight enough risk to be able to play it. This isn't giving me that to, to make any sense. In the dollar index yesterday, we were saying, if it's gonna follow through, because it's an attempt at a break out of the sideways action. Next major support is the 100 day average of closes. I don't think we were too off on that. I don't look for it to go a lot further than that on the downside either. The first general test of that big time support when you run into that. So uh, don't be a hero, but understand that we went from a risk on environment quickly yesterday to today suddenly a huge correction and I'll cover that in the uh, stock indices in a minute. A lot of this, you know, I, I get people like this, this person that wrote me today. We have broker assisted accounts. My brokers can help you and explain what I'm doing. I don't clearly have the ability to talk to all my subscribers at one point in time. We don't have a few subscribers to my research. We have quite a few. Uh, but I do my best to answer if you write me directly via email. If I get a moment, I even create videos for you to give you my answer on something as to where it's at. But my brokers have been with me mostly for decades. I mean, th these people make their career and I'm proud of it. And they finish their careers with me. And it's because I think I'm a 
fair boss, if you will, fair employer might be the right word. Um, boss in futures is the right word because you're forever saying, don't let that happen, don't do this. It's all about risk. And I teach them that and they teach it to you. That's what you've got to understand. It's not expensive. In the futures market, we tailor commissions to what you need, how much of their time you're taking up, what you expect from them. It's simple. You go to a good clothing store, they tailor it. You go in, you put on, like I do and anybody else, you put on a suit where they got to dress my arms and everything else. It's the same with commissions. One size does not fit all. What are your needs? Give them a chance. Tell them what you're paying elsewhere. Let them beat it. You heard me. Let them beat it. Let them earn your business. It's my business and their business. At the end of the day, without them, I'm nowhere. Give a call, 866-973-2077. That's the way to get hold of us. I'm Ira. You have a good day.